Um, in closing, I want to thank our panelists once again for their testimony today. Um, and I want to encourage you all, please uh, stay in touch with this committee, but with my office. I am deeply passionate about this issue. Um, I come from a background in technology. When I got my first job, I was a programmer. And I have since uh, been fighting for things, especially for women and kids. And this is um, a very important issue. I've seen this kind of thing have devastating consequences, even deadly consequences when we're talking about non-consensual pornography. Um, I wanted to piggyback on what Dr. Walden just talked about, civil damages not being enough. You're right. Any victim who's a victim of a non-consensual image or video, real or deep fake, should know, should be able to take possession of that and know that it's never going to be seen everywhere, anywhere, ever again for the rest of their life, if that's what they want. But that's not really a thing today. I mean, because these things can be found online and everywhere. Once that's out, it's forever. And these victims should be allowed to get their content back, real or fake, if their image and their likeness is part of it, and know that it's been destroyed forever from every device, any cloud, any, uh, anywhere online. And we're not, we're not there yet, and it's deeply troubling. So civil damages are not enough. And in some cases, I mean, there's not even criminal action here. I mean, I look at the Violence Against Women Act, and it's just a civil right of action, not even criminal. I think it's, if you're doing voyeurism at the federal level, you got to be like inter, over international water for it to be against federal law under Title 18. Like, it's insane to me. And so I'm deeply uh, passionate about trying to correct some of this, correct course, find the gaps, like as you said, Mr. Zabo, in definitions. While we were sitting here today, I went into the South Carolina's Code of Laws, and I just looked up the word porn. It doesn't exist in South Carolina's Code of Laws. And we're talking about definitions um, certainly there's a, there is, I agree with you, there's, there is room for improvement, there are gaps here, and I really want to um, figure out how we move forward in a bipartisan manner at the federal level, but also with states, especially my home state of South Carolina, there's a lot of work to do. $500 fine for, for voyeurism, the first time as a misdemeanor is wrong and it's offensive and it should be a much more expensive. We want to make sure that a man who does that to over a dozen women in South Carolina doesn't ever do it again, and a $500 fine and three years in jail just doesn't cut it. And the law is not clear on whether or not if it's the first offense, or if, let's say, for example, an example that I shared, if it's over a dozen women, images and videos this individual took, um, if it would be a felony, because it's multiple victims, the law is not clear. So there certainly is, um, you know, definitely room for improvement in our state as well. And um, I looked up imper uh, impersonations, forgery, forgery in South Carolina law is only related to financial transactions mostly. So there was just so much room to improve here, both at the federal and the state level. Uh, I want you all to know that my office is very much keen on adding to our portfolio of legislation constitutionally, as it makes sense, not overdoing it, but just the right amount so that victims are no longer victimized, or when they are, that it's quickly corrected. So. With that, um, and without objection, all members will have five legislative days within...